In this video, we will look at how you can bypass authentication via a weak signing key in a JWT token. Since I have already covered topics such as what is a JSON web token and what is signature verification in the previous video, I will not waste time repeating that information. Therefore, I recommend you watching the previous video first if you want to learn about those topics and then move further with this. So the first thing you want to know is what is a signing key or you can call it a secret key. A secret key is a string of characters that is used to sign a JSON web token. When a server receives a JSON web token, it uses a secret key to verify the token's signature. The server can then trust that the token has not been tampered with and was indeed issued by the trusted party. But if the secret key is weak, it can be brute forced by attackers, who can then use the key to tamper with the token's data and re-sign it again and then send to the server to access unauthenticated data. So it is just like passwords. If a password is easy with fewer characters and no special characters or numbers, it can easily be brute forced, right? Using a word list. And that's how a secret key can be brute forced as well. Okay, let's understand how this process works. We know that the server issues token to the client. And then that token is included in all the requests that is being sent by the client. What happens next? So the first step that the server does is decode the token. The server begins by decoding the JSON web token and then splits the token into three sections, header, payload, and signature, which we all know. Now the second step is verifying the signature. The server uses the signing key or secret key and the algorithm specified in the token header to verify the token's signature. The signature is created by hashing the header and payload sections along with the signing key. If the calculated signature matches the signature in the JWT, it indicates that the token has not been tampered with. But if it does not matches, then that means that the token has been tampered. Now once the verification process is done, server simply checks the payload. The server can access the data stored in the payload section of the JSON web token. That typically contains information such as user identifiers or permissions, and then validate the payload against the data in records. So I hope it made sense, but if you are still a little bit confused, don't worry because we are going to look at the practical part as well. The goal is to access admin panel and then delete a user. For demonstration purpose, I'm going to use both Swigger. I'll give the link in the description. Login with Viner and Peter. Now I'm going to click on my account to capture the request in Burp Suite. Send this to repeater. Change the path to admin and then send the request. Response says 401. So we are not authorized. Now I'm going to click on JSON Web Token. Again, this is an extension that I downloaded from B App Store. Now, you can see that the algorithm here is set to HS256. In this case, even if you change the sub value to administrator, this is not going to work out. You can try it out yourself. So we will try to find the secret key by brute forcing it in Hashcat. In my passwords directory, I have this file jwt.secrets.list. List of all the secrets that we can use to brute force it. Here I'm going to type the command hashcat hyphen a for attack mode that is zero means brute force hyphen m to type in the algorithm that we are using which is uh, hs256 and for the code for it is 16500 and then you have to paste the JSON token and then the name of the word list. There we can see the secret key is secret1, which is a really easy one, not a very complicated string. So now the interesting part starts. Copy the secret key. Go to burp suite and then go to decoder. Paste the secret key that you found, which is secret1, and then base64 encode it. Now copy the base64 encoded data and go to JWT editor keys. 
Here I'm going to delete the previous keys that I generated for less confusion. Click on new symmetric key, then click on generate. Change the key value to the base64 encoded data that we copied. Now go back to repeater and change the sub value to administrator because the admin page can only be accessed by the administrator user. Now we will try to re-sign this token. Below click on the sign button and make sure in the header options don't modify header is selected. Now click on ok and send the request. And this time we are getting a 200 response. Also we can see that now we can access the admin panel. I'm gonna click on show response in browser. And try to delete the user but because the Firefox is still using the same old token it is not authorized. In cases like this you can open the inspector tab and change the token in the storage section. Or you can simply move the cursor to the link and see what path is being used and then send the request on repeater. Now I'm going to tap the same path in the repeater and delete the user. So as you can see, even though the server was verifying the token with an algorithm and even with a secret key, we could still tamper it by simply brute forcing it. And that's why the secret key should be complex to avoid this kind of situations. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and let me know your views in the comment section.